Okay, so uh, we've started to get into some motivation for linearization for efficiency enhancement, but I wanted to cover one uh, type of amplifier that we hadn't covered yet, and that's a class C amplifier. So the class C amplifier is a linear amplifier, uh, and uh, it, that doesn't necessarily mean that its output is linear with respect to the input. It just means that the transistor acts as a current source for some part of the conduction cycle. So let's uh, revisit the uh, conduction angle uh, argument for power amplifiers. So the conduction angle is the phase over which the output current is conducting relative to one full cycle. And we start with the simplest amplifier, which is the class A, and the class A has a conduction angle of 360 degrees. In other words, the current is always conducting in a class A. Now we've also looked at the class B, and the class B only conducts over 180 degrees, or half of the cycle. The class AB is somewhere between class A and B. And finally we have the class C, which has a conduction angle that's between 0 and 180 degrees. Now one, that, one place that this can be used is sometimes in a Doherty amplifier, which we'll look at in a bit. But in a Doherty amplifier, we have two amplifiers, a main amplifier and an auxiliary amplifier. The main amplifier carries the bulk of the current, and the auxiliary amplifier carries the remainder of the current. Uh, so it, the uh, drain current or output current looks a little bit like this. So here we have the main amplifier conducting the bulk of the current and the auxiliary amplifier conducting the remainder of the current. And you can see if we use a class C amplifier, we can choose the division such that the main amplifier conducts more of the current than the auxiliary amplifier does. So how do we make a class C amplifier? Well, we just adjust the bias point. A class C amplifier is off for more than 50% of the cycle. So in principle, all we need to do is set the gate voltage on a MOS transistor to be less than the threshold voltage. Now our other amplifiers were already defined. If we set the gate voltage equal to the threshold voltage, this is a class B amplifier. And if we set the gate voltage greater than the threshold voltage, this is either a class AB or a class A amplifier. Now it's worth noting that by setting the gate voltage less than the threshold voltage as we do in a class C amplifier. We're increasing the efficiency at the expense of linearity. And in general, that's the trade-off we're making as we go from class A up to class B and ultimately to class A. We, as we become less efficient, we become more linear and vice versa. Okay, so let's examine our class C operation. Basically what's going to happen is as our input voltage uh, starts to increase up to the threshold voltage, there will be no current, and then once we reach the threshold voltage, the current will ramp linearly. The slope of the increase in current is 1 over gm of the transistor. So here we have a piecewise linear drain current, where the current is defined as 0 for the input is less than the threshold voltage, and as gm times the difference between the input and the threshold voltage for the input is greater than the threshold voltage. If we look at this current with respect to time, we're going to see a waveform that looks something like this. Where the conduction angle is implicitly less than 180 degrees or less than minus theta over 2 to theta over 2. Now we know in the limit that our Input voltage is equal to VA times cosine of omega t, and we know that uh, at omega t equals theta over 2, that would be when the input voltage was exactly equal to the threshold voltage. In other words, that's when the amplifier becomes a class B amplifier. We can use this to solve for the threshold voltage as a function of the conduction angle. And we can ultimately find that the conduction angle, or the conduction angle from this, which is equal to 2 times the inverse cosine of the threshold voltage over the amplitude of the input voltage. And making a, a final substitution, we can find the drain current in terms of the amplitude of the input and the conduction angle. Now to find the DC, 
we just integrate over one period of the drain current. All right, we can find that DC as follows. What we find here is that the limit of the DC current as theta goes to zero is equal to zero. This means as we reduce the conduction angle, the DC current reduces, and ultimately this is going to save power. Now we can use similar Fourier analysis to find harmonic output power. That is the harmonic power at each of the individual frequencies. So now we can find the currents at the fundamental and at the multiple uh, other harmonics, uh, in other words, the second, third, fourth, fifth harmonic. Uh, N equals one is the fundamental current and N equals anything else is a distortion current. Now we have a matching network or a resonant tank at the output of the amplifier that filters the harmonics. So finding the fundamental current, uh, we have the following expression. Uh, and we know that the maximum uh, amplitude of the sine wave at the input is VDD. So using these, we can uh, find the alpha power uh, and the DC power simply by multiplying the currents that we've just found by the voltages, and we can estimate the drain efficiency, P out divided by PDC. What we quickly discover is that the efficiency or the drain efficiency only depends upon the conduction angle. Now, I should note that this is a fairly generic expression, uh, and it is actually applicable for any conduction angle, meaning that it's applicable for all the prior class classes of uh, linear power amplifier that we've looked at before, class A, A, B, B, and now C. So here I've plotted that function, eta efficiency versus theta conduction angle, and we have some uh, specific markers at 0 degrees, 180, and 360 degrees, uh, which are going to help us to denote the classes of amplifiers that we're talking about. So for eta is be sorry, for theta is between 0 and 180 degrees. That is a class C amplifier, and the efficiency will go between 100 and 78.5 percent when it becomes class. As the conduction angle continues to increase, we have what we would call a class AB. And ultimately, as the conduction angle reaches 360 degrees, we have a class A amplifier where the efficiency is 50. An example of a class C amplifier from recent literature was from Karthik Natarajan, Natarajan in uh, RFIC in 2011. I'm going to draw the schematic here. So here's the schematic. We have a couple of passive components. Uh, L1, C1, and C2 are a tap C matching network. L3 and C3 are a third harmonic trap. It's a parallel resonant network designed to prevent the third harmonic current from flowing through to the output. One thing about the class C amplifier is that you need to have a very stable threshold voltage, and we know that threshold voltage varies with PVT. And one thing that Karthik did that was very smart in this paper was to add a feedback network to stabilize the threshold voltage. Now I'll point out that there are a couple of other uses for the class C other than the Doherty amplifier. It provides a high efficiency at low output power, and this is good in low power radios that use constant envelopes, such as for medical implants or Medi radio, uh, which uh, is uh, a band from 402 to 405 megahertz. Uh, this band only calls for 25 microwatts of EIRP or effective isotropic radiated power. So anytime that you need high efficiency and don't mind having low output power, class C's are pretty good. And they can also serve other purposes like as the auxiliary amplifier and a Doherty amplifier. So with that, I will stop for the day and talk to you again soon. Uh, please remember to like uh, and uh, subscribe 